the humble comma. That's the whole sentence. Uh, the humble comma, full stop. It's great. I'm going to show you a video about two things where commas have caused mathematics to go wrong because almost exactly a year ago I was on my way to Antarctica and not only did a new Pokemon game come out in which the calculator was broken, of course there's a calculator, but also I had a run in with a comma in an airport and when I got back from that trip I frantically filmed a video about those things just like in my study at home and then never put it out. And it's a year later, there's another Pokemon pair of games for some reason that have been released. I was like, you know what? I'm going to put that video out. So I'm just going to show you that video that I filmed a year ago. More importantly though, you should check out a companion video done by Tom Crawford. They have a channel called Tom Rocks Maths. They did a whole video about the mathematics, the ridiculous mathematics of the Pokédex. So maybe check that out first. I'll link to it below. And here's the video I filmed a year ago when I was back from Antarctica. On the 24th of November, a couple of weeks ago, I was in the middle of a multi-day journey to get from my home here in the UK to Antarctica. And don't worry, you will hear plenty more about Antarctica in videos to follow fairly soon. However, halfway through that journey, I was transiting through Santiago in Chile, and two very interesting things happened on the same day. First of all, in Santiago airport, I discovered I didn't have to bother doing any currency conversions because of a weird confluence, like a weird mathematical alignment out of pure coincidence, which I thought was amazing. And people discovered that in the new release of Pokemon, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, there was a calculator which was broken. It was returning some really weird results. At the time, I couldn't deal with any of these in depth, but I'm home now and you better believe I'm going to take care of them in that order. So picture this, I've already traveled within the UK to get to the airport in London, I've then flown to Madrid, changed planes, we've had an overnight 14 hour flight to Santiago in Chile. I walk out into the airport trying to find some snacks while I'm waiting for the next part of the journey. I look at the prices, expecting Chilean peso, and they're effectively still in British pounds. Very surreal moment. Well, to be honest, I didn't know this to start with. I looked up what the exchange rate was and I was pleased to see it was pretty much 1,000 to 1. One British pound was at the time worth 1,112 Chilean peso. And I think, well, what's that, like 10%? If I assume it's a 1,000 to 1 ratio and I buy something based on that rough figure, in reality, it'll be about 10.5% cheaper than I think it is. And for a few snacks in an airport, I figure that's good enough. Chile is also one of the many, many countries who, from my point of view, have swapped the use of the decimal point, like the full stop or the period, and the separator comma. So instead of a decimal point and a separator comma, they have a decimal comma and then a separator point, which looks weird the first time you see it, although it is used. I would say, I'm pretty sure, in more countries than not. But because when my sleep-deprived, jet-lagged brain looked at the prices in Chile and there was a dot instead of a comma to separate the thousands from the rest, that effectively cancelled out the 1,000 to 1 difference between the two currencies. So when I saw a soft drink advertised for 1.500 peso, I didn't have to convert it. I knew it equaled 1.500 pounds. I checked my bank statement afterwards. I was actually charged 1.39 pounds. What's that, like 11 pence off? Amazing. So because of this weird coincidence that the convention swapping cancelled out the conversion rate, the prices, from my point of view, still in pounds. I found this example by accident. So the question now is, of course, for which pair of countries is it the most exact? So when I got home, did I write some terrible Python code to scrape the Google searches required to get the exchange rates for 164 currencies, all the ones where I could find an official three letter ISO code for, and then put them in a massive grid to find out which ones were the closest to an exact 1000 to one ratio. Oh, you know I did. Here are the best of the best at the time. Even across the course of the day while I've been putting this video together, because we're looking at 
a 1000 to 1 currency conversion. Slight fluctuations reorder this all the time, but the best has pretty consistently been if you were traveling from Peru and you're used to working in Peruvian Huevo Sol and you go all the way to Cambodia where they use Cambodian Real, the exchange rate is one Peruvian Huevo Sol is 1,002.21 Cambodian real. That is incredibly close. And Peru is one of the very rare countries in South America who do use a point sometimes as the decimal point. And in Cambodia, they use a comma. So this would work, except in Cambodia, they use uh, different digits. And I've decided, I mean, they're not that hard to learn, but what I really want, like the picture I'm going with here is someone stumbling out of a plane, super tired and jet lagged, from my own personal experience, looking at a price and just it being exactly what they're used to at home. And I think different digits disqualifies that. Here's the winning scenario. Imagine you live in Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, should that be imagine you live in Trinidad or Tobago? Do you live in both? I don't know. I'll look it up. Anyway, you live in one or both. You're in, you, you, use, you use Trinidad and Tobago dollars as your normal currency. You then travel south to Paraguay, where they use the Paraguay Guarani. Now, the exchange rate is $1 equals 1,003.05 Guarani at the time of recording. So that's less than half a percent different. And their separators and decimal points swap. Trinidad and Tobago use uh, the, the dot as the decimal separator. And if you head on down to Paraguay, they use the dot as the thousands separator. And so if you did that journey, that specific journey, that is the closest match. And the percentage difference is a rounding error all things considered. So if you did that journey, Trinidad and Tobago, down to Paraguay, you walk out, you will see exactly the same currency effectively listed on products. Amazing. And ridiculous currency games aside, the moral of the story here is to not get too hung up on the specific mathematical notation that you learnt during probably the bulk of your schooling. People find it very confusing the first time they travel to a country where the dot and the comma are swapped in the notation, but it doesn't make a difference. As long as you're careful and consistent and you know which one you're meant to be using, it's all fine. Which brings us neatly to part two. Pokemon Diamond, comma, Pokemon Shining Pearl. Well, actually two different games that were originally released for the Nintendo DS ages ago have been re-released for the Nintendo Switch because money on the 19th of November this year. A few days later on Reddit, user Conrad posted this to the Pokemon subreddit with the title, not that anyone would use it, but the calculator in BDSP, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, is absolutely broken. And then they've got a video here. So I guess uh, let's full screen that. And we'll have a little watch. Let's see what they're going on about. Here we go. So uh, 10 divided by 5 equals 2. So far, so good. 10 divided by 4 e Oh, zero, zero, 002. Okay, 7 divided by 3 equals... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That's... Way hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Can I back that up? Let's reverse that. It's 7... <laughs> it's just all question marks. It's just like... Don't, don't even get me started on, on, on uh, re re recurring digits. I'm out. Okay, right. So originally I thought maybe it's just, you know, truncating it to the nearest whole number and some lead zeros for some reason, but that's hilarious. Okay, uh, what happens next? Two point, just entering a number. Th okay, that lead number's jumping all over the place. Times two e. Okay. I think we can all agree this calculator is broken. Any moment now, we are going to arrive in Conjecture Town, where I will be guessing wildly as to why I think the Pokemon calculator is broken. But our final stop off before we get there, in terms of things we know for certain, is that it depends on the region that your Nintendo Switch is set to, whether or not you see this problem. We saw people commenting this 
on the Reddit post saying it depends on the region. And so a friend of mine, Tom Crawford, who you may know from their own YouTube channel, Tom Rocks Maths, they appear on number file as well. They got their Nintendo Switch at, did a screen grab, and when it was set to English in the UK, the calculator worked absolutely fine. It could do all of these calculations. If they set it to, let's say, uh, Germany, suddenly it would break. So it seems that the calculator only breaks if you set your Nintendo Switch to a country who traditionally swapped the decimal point to be a decimal comma, and they use the point as a thousands separator. So we're as certain as we can be that somewhere between the number being stored as an actual binary representation of a number in the switch's memory to it being converted to a number that can be displayed on the screen is going via having a comma in it and that is breaking everything. From here in it is a hundred percent conjecture. And I keep saying we because I very much appreciate, as well as Tom Crawford giving me a hand, Christian Lawson Perfect, who if you've read my books, I think is mentioned some of their maths is in every single book that I've written, and Oliver Dunk, who helps out with all sorts of coding and database and wonderful things with my ridiculous projects. We had a bit of a WhatsApp chat before I disappeared into the Antarctic to try and crack this. We've been discussing it. However, I will say what I'm going to present now is my own theory. So don't blame them for how hand wavy and awful this is about to be. Here is what I think is happening in very general terms, because I'm not even sure what language this was coded in or what's happening. This is just my 100% pseudo code, completely made up. I think it's vaguely what's going on behind the scenes theory. We'll start with 10 divided by four equals 002, which should be 2.5. And the first tip off, is that it's got the correct number of characters. So somewhere between the number being a floating, like a float value in the memory, it's got to be converted into a string, which just means a series of like characters that can be displayed on the screen. And when you're doing programming, you've got to be a little careful, depending on the language, the difference between something that's a number and something that's like text. And numbers can be a bit weird because a digit can be a number or just a character. And so somewhere along the line, the numbers have to become characters. And so what I think has happened is the calculator knows that the answer to 10 divided by four has three characters in it. And it turns out there should be a two, a decimal point, and then a five. However, for some reason, instead of giving us those three characters, 5.2 backwards, it's giving us two, zero, zero. It's almost like it's starting at the wrong part of the number and padding it out with lead zeros. Let's say, hypothetically, that the calculator behind the scenes has correctly done 10 divided by four equals 2.5, except when you then get a function to turn that int into a raw string, it gives you a bunch of extra lead zeros as well. So you get like 0, 0, 0, 0002.5. Five, and that's now a string. And there may even be some other non-digit characters afterwards, because often when you convert a number into a string, depending on how you do it, there can be some letters kicking around, like uh, base 16 a lot of the time, there's an X, a zero and an X sitting at the front. So I don't know how the string ends, but I'm gonna assume it either ends there or there's some other non-digit characters afterwards. And so now, the switch has to work out which of the three characters it needs to pull out of their string and put on the screen, because normal humans don't want lead zeros on their like pokey watch thing. Don't play the game. And so it thinks, right, I've got to find the three characters I need. And I think what it's doing is it is starting at the beginning of the string. It is working its way down to the first time it hits something which is not a digit or a decimal point. And so it just scans down, first one digit, next one digit, all the way down, gets to the last one, and then after that, no more digits or decimal points. There could be other stuff, I don't know. And then it goes back and gets the three characters before that, they're the ones it needs, and then serves those up. And the reason why I think I might be doing something like that, that's how I do it. So to work out which currencies were a thousand to one ratio, I actually reused some code I wrote earlier in, uh, in November. For those of you who listened to my podcast, A Problem Squared, where myself and Beck Hill solve problems, someone asked, 
what would be the total amount of money if every single human gave you one of their local currency. And so that's why I went and got the values of all 164 currencies in, in terms of euros. And then I multiplied them by populations and I, I did all that other jazz. But I had some Python code, which basically just Googled one insert currency code in euro and then returned the web page as a massive string. And I, well, I knew I could then search within the HTML to find the little bit I needed, but I still had to write some code and I looked it up and what I did, my code is keep going if it's not a space, because I knew after the number there would be a space. And so my code would scan along until it hit a space and then it knows it's reached the end of the number and then it would reverse back up to collect all the bits of the number. And then I had the reverse problem. I then had to turn that string into a number that I could use in my spreadsheet. Yes, I know Google Sheets with Google Finance would have been better. This video is not about that. So I think they had very similar code, but it's looking for either digits or decimal points and then it keeps going. A comma would throw it. So if in the function, let, I don't know, maybe it's using this from like the switches built in stuff. If the language has been sent to German and the function is turning the number into a string, it's probably putting in the comma instead of the decimal point in the string. And then the code is searching along, hits the comma and thinks, well, a comma, I mean, you don't get commas in numbers. That must be the end of the number. And so then it reverses back and gets three characters and displays those. And there were lead zeros before that. So that's what it displays. And to test this, we also did 10 divided by eight, which should be 1.25, four characters, and it shows three lead zeros that we messed around, did 100 divided by eight, which should be 12.5, you don't get 12.5, you still get four characters, you get 0012. And so, okay, so far so good. And this was the easy bit where people were, they, they worked out that basically, just by looking at it, it's giving you the whole number part and some mysterious zeros. This theory, I think, explains why you're only getting the whole number part. It's because it's stopping at the comma instead of carrying on. And it explains why you get lead zeros and specifically why you get that number of lead zeros. Next bit's more complicated. Next up, why does seven divided by three, which should be 2.3333 recurring, why does that equal question marks? And this is where it gets slightly interesting because that's what happened in the video that was put up on Reddit and a friend of a friend, Lorna Jagged, captured their switch and they had exactly the same thing. They had question marks appearing. When Tom tried it, it didn't give a question mark, it just didn't update the screen. So when we did seven divided by three, it would just freaked out. Instead of question marks, just kept the three and hoped no one would notice. And then we tried the same thing with some division by nine and again it's like, Nope, nothing to see here. When you hit equals again, then it went to zero. And I think now it's, I don't know, completely freaking out or it's rounding it, something weird is happening there. But I think in both cases, when you've got recurring decimal places, it's freaking out. And so the case with all the question marks, I think it's just got a something's failed question mark. Whereas Tom's version just figured if it didn't move, you wouldn't notice. It's assuming your vision is based on motion, like a T-Rex, which is not true. My theory here is that the calculator was trying to show lots of decimal places, three, 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 three. In fact, it worked out like the maximum number of digits it could show, had the same problem where it hit the comma instead of a decimal point, and then tried to get that many lead zeros, but there weren't that many. So however it converted the float into a string, it only had a finite number of lead zeros, which was smaller than the number of recurring digits it was trying to show, hit the end of the string, hit some other weird characters, like, and that's what broke it. So that's my theory. I think it still fits with before. It's not as nice a match, but I think the next bit makes up for it. Final section. Why when you type a number in, does that lead digit jump around so much? Or at all. Now we are pulling right into Conjectureville. So something is happening behind the scenes where it's doing the decimal part correctly. So it's finding the last set number of digits at the end of whatever's stored in the memory and correctly returning that and putting it where it should go. But then instead of returning the digits that go in front of the decimal point, it's going right to the end of the number again 
and getting the correct number of digits required, but from the wrong place. So I would say in there somewhere, they have hard coded search the string for a period, for a full stop. And when you get there, back it up. And obviously it's not finding the full stop, it's getting right to the end of the string and then taking those for some reason. So I think the, the comma has thrown the one section of that, the bit before the decimal point, but yet it's still able to get the other one correctly. So again, wild conjecture. And for all of this, if you've got some extra insight, if you want to anonymously email me, let's say you work at the Tendo, matt at standardmass.com, and you let me know, or if you've got a theory, put it in the comments below. I would love to hear your other suggestions. I appreciate this is a little bit rambly. It's me guessing and conjecturing, but I love problem solving. I love working out these sorts of puzzles, and this is my best theory so far. I would love to hear your thoughts. So if you think you know what's going wrong, let me know in the comments below. And if you're at all curious about this, I highly recommend learning to code, even if it's just as a hobby, which is what I do. I use Python because it's super straightforward, loads of other languages out there. And a final huge thanks to everyone who gave me a hand trying to trawl through what on earth was going on with this calculator. Tom is actually doing a video about the Pokédex, looking at some of the ridiculous calculations, like notoriously bizarre values assigned to some of the Pokémon. And they're putting the video out at the same time. So check it out. I will link to their channel, Tom Rocks Maths, below. I hope you found that video interesting, comma, informative, comma, a lot of fun and packed full of commas. Do check out Tom's video. I'll link to it below. Huge thanks to Christian Lawson Perfect and Oliver Dunk who helped me wade through some of the mathematics. All mistakes are mine. And of course, currencies have moved a lot since I made that video. So if you can find a better pair of swappable currencies. I mean, someone needs to rerun the numbers. If you find a better pair, be the first person to put it in the comments below. Oh, and while we're here, for those of you who watch right to the end of videos on the second channel, I'm, oh my goodness, you're like a, a subset of a subset of a subset of my favorite viewers. Sneak preview, stand up mass Christmas card this year. Look at that. That's what it's going to be. I'm not going to give away any more. On the inside, it says, I hope your holidays are net fun. And so I'm going to, um, if you support me on Patreon, you'll get a digital version of this. Depending on the tier, you'll get the physical version. But I thought I'd just, oh my goodness, what's the related video going to be about? Let's find out.